Today we're going to talk about the Dropbox section of your eCompanion shell. I'm going to start by showing you how to create a Dropbox, and then I'm going to show you how to run the Dropbox from the instructor side of things. So the first thing you want to do is just create a content item. Uh, you may already have a content item created that you want to add a Dropbox to. That's easy enough to do, but we're going to go to the Author tab here. We're going to click Weak Content Items so that we can add a new content item going to call this test and I'm just going to choose the text multimedia option here and you can see it's in week one and all you need to do to create a Dropbox for any content item is make sure that this box is checked right here and then we'll add that item all right so now we see we've got our test right here and in order to access the Dropbox when your students are going to submit an assignment they will go to the Dropbox section here then you'll see that the Dropbox we've created for week one entitled test is right here. And just to show you really quickly how to add a Dropbox to something that you've already created, let's just click on this videos section here. Again, make sure we're under the author tab and then you go to the toolbox and you just click this create Dropbox basket button here and it will do the same thing that we just did by checking the box, telling the system that we want to create a Dropbox. So let's move on to the Dropbox here and we'll again click on the Dropbox option in your course toolbar and we'll take a look at a Dropbox that I created for this course and as I'll explain in a second here it's this is not going to look exactly as it would if your students had already submitted items to the Dropbox just because I've already graded all the items and uh, I'll, I'll show you what I mean by that. So we'll start by clicking on week five, the written paper here, which I created a Dropbox for in week five when I asked the students to start writing their paper. So we'll click on that. And a few things I wanna show you here is we've got an inbox option, an outbox option, and a no submissions option. And the inbox is exactly where all of your student submissions will be when you log into this particular Dropbox. Once you've graded the items, they'll actually go to this outbox here. And then under no submissions, you can see any of your students who didn't submit anything to the Dropbox. So we'll move down here, and this is where your students would be listed along with all of their attachments and everything they put into the Dropbox. Obviously, there's no students listed here because I've already graded these papers, but just imagine there's a list of students here. And then as we move farther along to the right, you'll see a little paper clip here, and that's the attachments. So anything they attach to this, you can just click on the little icon, and it'll bring that paper up or whatever it is they submitted. And then it's going to have a date and time stamp for you, so you know if they submitted their work late or not. And then over here, you see numeric grade and letter grade. This is just like your grade book. There's actually going to be an open box right here and right here that will allow you to grade their papers right from this spot. And then you'll see a, a box here that says return and if you click that after entering their grades it'll actually return the grades to them. Uh, another thing is when you have your list of students here on the left side they'll all be blue links and once you click on them it'll actually bring up the full gradebook view where you can submit their score, you can submit comments and things like that. And I'll actually show you that here in my outbox. Like I said, all these papers have been graded. And I'm just going to click on this person right here. And as you'll see in a second here, their full grade book will load up. And you can put in their score. You can put in a comment. And I emailed everybody's papers back to them uh, with comments. So that's why I put this in here. And then you can add or remove attachments and things like that. And then once you're done, you just save and close.